Hey everybody, Christy Glass here. It is August 2020, but I am wearing my 2019 New York Sheep and Wolf sweatshirt swag because even though the New York Sheep and Wolf Festival is canceled this year, I'm still doing Tell Me About Your Rhinebeck Sweater. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Tell Me About Your Rhinebeck Sweater is, actually, I have my sign over here. Let's just get it out, shall we? Okay, so back in 2016, when I had first started my YouTube channel, I had only been to Sheep and Wool Festival, mm, well, I'd been, I think, every year since 2011, because my daughter was born in 2012, and I remember driving up in 2011, talking to my two daughters about possibly having another baby and I was pregnant but didn't know it. So that would that would mean 2011 was my first time going and then I didn't start my YouTube channel till about four years later. So I think I went for four years before I had knitted a Rhinebeck sweater. I wasn't a sweater knitter the first time I went and I wasn't for many years after that. I just thought, you know what? I can only knit scarves. I'll never be able to knit like that. And I was so, so, so wrong. And I had this friend who kept telling me, if you can knit and you can purl, you can knit a sweater. And I did not believe her, but I was so inspired by everything I was seeing. It's like when you go, everything is amazing and beautiful and you want to touch it. You want to pet it. You want to ask questions about it. And so I thought, you know what? I, I just want to, I want to make a video and I want people to be in it and tell me about their sweaters. And so I made this makeshift sign. And the reason maybe you saw me struggling a little bit to open it, it has slap bracelets in here and some dowel rods and then this long handle because I wanted to be able to take it in and out of buildings and roll it up and then bring it out when I wanted someone to talk to me. So that very first day, four years ago, I approached the fairgrounds holding my sign like this. And I'm not, I don't, I don't really get embarrassed easily and I don't, I'm pretty brave, but I did feel a little trepidation walking around with this sign and I was just hoping that someone would tell me about the Rhinebeck sweater and I remember the first people to do so, it was clearly a knitting group. I think they were all wearing the Enchanted Mesa or many of them were wearing the Enchanted Mesa by Stephen West and they just jumped right in. I want to tell you about my Rhinebeck sweater and it was so beautiful. And that year I was wearing an Oregon sweater and didn't know it because that was before I knew about, even though I wanted to know about the yarn and the designers and everything, I didn't even know about my own sweater. It was just such a steep learning curve for me. And so one of my favorite moments is when I was standing on the hill, everyone says the hill, which is this location kind of near the entrance, kind of to the side. And this woman came up to me and said, tell me about your Rhinebeck sweater. And it was Nora Gon, the designer herself. So it was so embarrassing for me, but so amazing because she was so humble and kind about me not even knowing about my own sweater. We have a photo together and I have since sold that sweater on an eBay de-stash. Actually, I sold a bunch of my finished objects and all of the proceeds went to win, W-I-N. So I feel really great about that. But many of my sweaters are just out in the universe with other knitters. So I don't have that sweater to show you. But the very next year, I'm going to put this sign down now. The very next year, I knitted um, a cable knit. And it was sort of my first attempt at cable knit. This is um, using indie dyed yarn, but has this sort of heart pattern in the front. And this was my second Rambeck sweater. I chose it because I hadn't done the cables before, and it was a challenge piece. So I can't remember the name of it right now as I'm making this video, so I'm going to link to it underneath this video. It's by Tannis of Tannis Fiber Arts, but I can't think of the name of the of the sweater. But of course I have a finished object video all about it. And then the next year I partnered with Stephanie of Asylum Fibers and Michelle Costa of 144 Stitches, Stitch and Hustle, to do a shawl along. And our theme was our mascot was unicorn. It was a unicorn along. And so that really informed what I wanted to do with my sweater. And I had seen this sweater I think it was Prada sweater or Gucci, one of the two, at a department store that had all these stripes and this cat with this like halo around it. And I thought that is such an interesting sweater. I want to recreate that. So I scoured the internet and found the perfect pattern and picked out all my skeins of yarn. And then I needle felted a unicorn on the front. And this was my Rhinebeck sweater. So this sweater, I just, I love. I mean, New York Sheep and Wool Festival is the place to wear something unique and interesting because everyone appreciates it. Everybody does. Not that we knit for others to 
give us accolades, but you just know that if you wore it anywhere else, they wouldn't get it. But at a fiber festival, they get it, they get you, they see you, and you're with your people. So this was such a fun masterpiece. Loved making it. I will link to this one also. The next year then, we did a shawl along and dragon was the theme, and so I wanted to challenge myself yet again. And this time I found this amazing cable pattern for a dragon and it was just the dragon. So I had to build a sweater around it, which was so challenging. A friend of mine loved it, so I actually sent it off to her and I don't have it to show you, but it is such a masterpiece and took so much concentration and planning and effort. And again, I just loved wearing it to New York Sheep and Wool. So if you've never seen Tell Me About Your Rhinebeck Sweater, what's awesome about it is that anybody I come across, I just interview, I put them in the video. I like to organize it a little bit, so sometimes you'll see many sweaters in a row all from the same designer. Maybe you'll see many sweaters in a row that have the same yarn, or maybe it's the same exact pattern even. And it kind of makes it like a museum in that way because even though it's a video, it's sort of presented in a museum format where you see all of one sort of genre in one place and you can kind of compare them. So you see different heights, different body types, different races of people all wearing the same designer and, you know, male, female modifications. You learn a lot from watching it too because you learn about new indie dyers or new designers maybe you've never heard from before, heard of before. And I really like when people say things like, this is my first sweater. This is my first sweater and they have such pride when they say it or when they say I steaked my sweater. So last year actually we had a steak and streak so I encouraged everyone to knit the sweater and get it all prepped and ready to go but not cutting it yet. So a steak is when you knit a sweater in the round, it's a cardigan, you knit it in the round and you knit a little panel called a steak and then the last thing you do before you open up your cardigan is you cut it in half. You cut your knitting in half. So a lot of people were intrigued by this idea and this challenge and wanted to do it. So I had a steak and streak. So we all gathered before the fairgrounds opened and people were cutting open each other's sweaters. It was a hoot. It was a party. It was so amazing. And I got this idea from watching women saying, I steaked my sweater. You know, I cut my sweater and they were so proud of it. So there's really the sky is the limit of what you want to knit for your first Rhinebeck sweater and I love that so many people's Rhinebeck sweater is their first sweater period. It's their first sweater. So this is the video. Tell me about your Rhinebeck sweater and another fun element of it is the last two years we've we've done it live. So everyone watches it as a premiere who wants to and then there's a live chat on the side. So usually about three to four hundred people are watching when it goes live and I love seeing how people comment or ask questions or just you know, shout out like, that's me or that's my friend or whatever it is. It's, it's really, really fun to participate in that way. So this year, since we're not going to be able to do this live, I wanted to invite you to be part of Tell Me About Your Rhinebeck Sweater 2020. And I want to post this video the same day that Rhinebeck would have been, the Saturday of Rhinebeck. So I believe that puts us at October 17th. So I would like to put this on my channel on October 17th and that gives you about eight weeks to finish a sweater. Now I'll need the videos before October 17th. So just, you got to get knitting. You got to get knitting or crocheting is also acceptable. So you got to get making your Rhinebeck sweater as soon as possible. Now when you're done making your sweater, this is how you enter your sweater into the virtual tell me about your Rhinebeck sweater. I have an email address. It's christyglassknits at yahoo.com. And I think what would be great is if you sent me your video via WeTransfer. It's uh, a website that I'm really familiar with and you can use it for free. I don't believe you need to even sign up. You just go to wetransfer.com. You drop the file into where it says, you know, file. You just can drag and drop it. And then you put your email address and mine. So it's going to me and you're the return address and then you just pre press hit send. I would like to have the highest quality that you can make for me. That will make the video really, really beautiful. And I also am only accepting, I am only accepting videos that are in the landscape or the horizontal. So this is landscape or horizontal and I'm 
only accepting videos that are landscape or horizontal. If you send me one that's up and down, I'm going to return it to you. And if I don't have time to email you back and say, I can't accept this as vertical or portrait, then don't be sad if your video is not included. I just will only accept landscape horizontal. I want it to look as good as possible. And so having them all in the same, the same landscape or horizontal is what's going to make it look as best as it can look. iPhone quality is probably okay. If you want to go fancy and get your fancy camera out and make a file like that, that's totally fine. If you want to pre-edit it and take out your ums and the times you messed up and maybe a voice on the other end asking you questions, I welcome that as well. I am also happy to edit it down. So basically, this is how it goes. I say, tell me about your Rhinebeck sweater. And you tell me about it. And then usually I have a few follow-up questions. Maybe I, I point out something interesting that caught my eye, like, oh, tell me about this color work, or where did you get your buttons? Where is that designer from? Is this your first sweater? I might have some follow-up questions. So what I think would be, would be best for you is maybe you can write yourself a little script. You can either write out two to four questions that you would like to answer about your Rhinebeck sweater. Get in my brain, pretend you're me, or you can just tell me about it. So like this, tell me about your Rhinebeck sweater. My Rhinebeck sweater is Christmas in July by Tannis. And I decided to make this because I wanted to use as many colors of Rauma as I had in my stash. I put them all in order like a rainbow. And then I really wanted the yoke to feel like it was a completely different sweater from the body. I wanted it to be like someone had cut two sweaters in half and put them together. So I chose a really wild dark green that didn't really go with the yoke at all. And what's special about this sweater is that I got all of my yarn in Norway. So it was my love letter to my trip to Norway. I'm Christy Glass, and you can find me on Ravelry at Christy Glass. Okay, so that's basically what I want you to do. You might feel a little shy. Do a few takes if you feel shy. It's okay. Send me the best one. And just know, you know, the things that you want to know about someone's sweater, tell us about that. So what was cool about what I just said is the, the tie-in to Norway, the detail of wanting it to look like two different sweaters, and then of course the designer and the type of yarn that I used. Other tips, uh, other things I could have said, this is my first time doing color work, this is my first fingering sw weight sweater, this is my first sweater, um, I love it because dot dot dot. So you can think of different sentences that you might wanna fill in, right? If you have a friend help you out, then make sure that your face is receiving the best light. So no shadows. I do have a shadow right here, but try not to have shadows. And one tip you can do is if you put your hand in front of you and move it around in a circle, you'll be able to see when your hand hits the light, right? So my hand looks really lit up right here and in shadow when it's right here. So if you watch your hand, oh, look, there's light. That's where you should be standing. So you would take the position of where that hand was. And that makes sense because there's actually a light right there. You can use a window. A window is a really, really great light source. So open up the blind and stand in front of the window like you're looking out the window. That's where you should stand, like you're looking out of it. And maybe you can prop your camera or your phone up on that window. That would be a really good scenario if you're self-taping. You could also get an iPhone, um, what is this, tripod. These are not, I, I don't want you to buy anything. I think you can rig a phone or a camera so easily if you get creative. You just prop it up on the right items or get a little tape out or whatever you need to do. But if you want to, these are very inexpensive, like iPhone multi-purpose tripods. I think you can get them on Amazon for under, under 20 bucks for sure, maybe in the 10 to $15 range. And then you can adjust it. And what's cool is this can go um, to the side. If you were doing portrait, which we're not doing portrait, and this way would be great. And then you just pop your phone in here. This is this has got a little spring to it. So you can pop it in to look just like this. Horizontal landscape. I'm gonna keep saying it because you're gonna get it. Horizontal landscape 
is what we want, not portrait, not vertical, not up and down. We only want sideways. Okay, you getting it? Do you have any other questions about the process? It's pretty easy. Knit the sweater, take a video telling me about your sweater in horizontal or landscape, send it via WeTransfer to ChristyGlassNits at Yahoo.com. I will say send it by October 10th would be great. I will take them starting today if you're ready. I would love to start editing today if you're ready because the more time I have, the better. But I will take them up to October 10th and if we get to October 10th, and I still feel like I have it in me to add some videos, I will let you know on Instagram. So follow me on Instagram, Christy Glass Knits, and I will tell you in the stories if I can handle some more submissions, okay? If you have any questions, please leave a question in the comments below. I will put these instructions written out underneath this video so you can read it. And I really, 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 really hope that you knit a Rhinebeck sweater. And I really hope that you submit it for telling me about your Rhinebeck sweater. We need this video, you guys. We need this video. We're going to make this video happen. It's going to be amazing. The end. Bye. This is very technological. This sign was made of slap bracelets. And oh, <laughs> come on, slap bracelet technology. You can do it. This is an old sign, too. Maybe slap bracelets only last a certain amount of time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is too funny. Okay, hold on. Stay open. Okay, there we go. That, that one's open. Okay. Can you see it? 